Hey guys! I often compare learning to throw on the wheel to learning to drive a car. At first, there seems to be so many things you need to remember. At the beginning, it may feel a little like rubbing your tummy and patting your head at the same time. Eventually though, like driving, throwing will start to feel more natural and muscle memory will start to take over. In this video, I'm going to show you what the inside of the pot should look like throughout the main stages of throwing a cylinder. I'm going to do this by cutting my pots in half. I know this sounds harsh, but I teach all my students to do this exercise. It teaches you so much about the clay thickness of the base and of the walls, your finger position, and what angle the walls should be when you're pulling. Here I'm using 450 grams of stoneware clay, which is about a pound. I'm not going to go over centering here. I have another very detailed video you can watch on that, which I've linked to above. Whilst you're here, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to liking this video and subscribing to my channel for lots more helpful pottery videos like this one. After centering the clay, I cone it up and down. This helps to homogenize the clay and eradicate any air bubbles I might have missed during wedging. I make the clay into a disc shape. Once I've opened up my clay, I'm cutting it in half to show you the base thickness. This should be approximately a quarter of an inch or five mil to one centimeter thick, depending on how big your pot is, of course. A bigger pot will need thicker walls to support it. Therefore, your base will need to be towards the thicker side. Be careful your base is the same thickness as your finished walls, as this will ensure even drying and avoid pesky S cracks. As you can see at this stage, my walls are thicker than my base. And this is because when I pull them up, this will thin them out. Don't forget to compress the base to help avoid S cracks. Okay, now I'm onto the first pull. I'll do this with my thumb and my fingers, like a little claw, holding my sponge in my right hand to dribble water over where I need it. I will pull up the clay towards the center of the wheel head to make a little volcano shape, like so. This ensures that the centrifugal force from the wheel turning fast is driving the clay back down into the wheel head itself. If you begin pulling the clay straight up, the force of the fast wheel will start opening it out and you may lose control and it might collapse outwards. As you can see, the walls are leaning towards the center of the wheel. They're still quite thick right now, but that's okay. They'll thin out on the next step. Let me show you my hand position when I pull up the clay. I use my middle finger of my left hand on the inside. My elbows are braced against my body my hands stay connected at all times via my thumb. This gives maximum stability. Next time you're at the wheel, cut your pots in half. I know this sounds harsh, but it really will teach you a whole lot about your technique. Throwing on the potter's wheel forces us to become super aware of each one of our fingers, and in fact, our entire body. You will need to slow down. Every movement must be controlled, and feel almost rhythmical. Be mindful of each gesture and every finger placement. Never rush throwing. Always allow yourself enough time to get absorbed in the process. Now I'll do my second pull. You can use your knuckle here on the outside, but I like to use a sponge. I use the very edge of it as a kind of buffer between my fingertips and the clay, as I find it reduces friction and the need for more water. I gather up the clay right from the base and again push it towards the centre of the wheel. This helps to ensure your clay remains centred. The walls are still angled inwards. I won't open them out to their final diameter until the final pull. As you can see, my right hand on the inside of the clay is slightly higher than my left, which is on the outside. This forms a ridge of clay which is pulled up to create the height. 
I always think it's strange that potters call this pulling, as it's much more of a pushing action in my opinion. After the second and third pull, my cone shape is growing taller and getting wider. When I have the height I want, I will start to open out the clay from a cone into a cylinder. I'll make sure I'm gathering up the clay right from where it meets the wheel head, as this is where it's thickest. I use the same sponge pull, evening up the pressure between my inside finger and my outside to guide the clay straight up. As I move my sponge and my finger up the clay, I ease off the pressure ever so slightly towards the top because the further I move up, the thinner the clay is and the less clay I need to move. I'll use a bamboo rib to give me a straight sided cylinder, ensuring the clay is glossy with water so it doesn't stick to the rib. At this stage, I have the wheel at about half speed. I am moving slower than the wheel at all times. This is what the inside of a finished cylinder looks like. As you can see, the walls are even and the base may be only a touch thicker. This is because when the pot is leather hard, it will be trimmed to match the wall's thickness. To get personal help from me on your own pottery journey, check out my Pottery Club, where you'll get detailed tutorials, tips, tricks, and loads of recommendations, as well as a supportive community. The link is below this video. I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching.